Hello and welcome to my channel where we discuss the power platform. Now in today's episode we're going to have a look at something that I do quite often without even really thinking about it and thinking that it's something outside of the box and that is using a gallery to store and save data. Now as I mentioned I do this so much that it's become kind of second nature to me um, in terms of a method of saving data. So what you can see on the screen here, and I'm going to link one of my other videos below, which actually uh, talks about what data this is, which is a finance user case, user case, use case. And on that, on this gallery, you can actually see the name. You've got a forecast value, and you've got a comment. Now, my back end for this is a SharePoint list. I'm just going to quickly show that to get a bit of context. So you've got um, a title, an index value an entry date, an account type, and a forecast prediction. Now, what I would do on a gallery like this is, first I would allow the user to see the values, right? And now I'm gonna say, well, you can edit these if you like. And if I go into the play mode and just show you, first of all, what happens when you click on that edit icon, is all of a sudden these boxes have changed and they've become editable. And the only thing that's changed at the top is you've now got a, a cross symbol that's appeared. If I click on that cross symbol, it goes away. So what's actually happening behind the scenes there? If I go on to the on select property of this pen icon, you can see it says here, set edit var to be true. Now edit var is a variable I am using to control the display property of both my forecast, which is a drop down value, and my comment, which is uh, a text value, which I can, I can edit. Now, if I go into the display property, as I mentioned in here, or the display mode, it says here, if edit var is true, so if I've clicked on the pencil icon, then the display mode is edit. If it's not, then display mode is view. And similarly, the same thing is of the case here. If I go into the display mode, I've got the exact same formula. So what happens when I click this, edit var becomes on, and these are editable. Similarly, if I look at the on select formula of the X, edit var is turned to false. Now the next bit is how, how do these, um, how do the X and the tick disappear and come back? Well, the same property is used. This X will only appear, if I go to the visible property, if edit var is turned on. So you see when we turn on edit var by clicking on the edit icon, you can now see the X. And similarly, well, we don't want to see the edit icon if we're already in edit mode. Then I go into here and we look at the visible property and edit var is, um, it's when it's, it's the converse of it. So if it's true, then it's false. If it's false, then it's true. Okay. So if we move on slightly now and look at, well, okay, fine. You've got your gallery here. And if you were doing a normal um, form, you would essentially submit that form or you could patch that form. Okay. So if, it, if that doesn't make sense to... Anyone that's watching, you know, go, go ahead and have a look at what that actually means before, um, you know, hit pause, uh, make sure you're clear with what submit form and patch does, and then let's go into the next section. So now I want to save all of this, okay, right? I'm going to edit my data. I'm going to change all these values. I'm going to type a few things in, completely just making some um, stuff up. Now, the key is that I need to save each row into my data set and for that I'm going to use a for all function okay so I'm going to um, skip ahead slightly and I'm going to link the video below because I do talk about this step by step in terms of exactly um, the steps that are taken but I want to go down to this step because uh, the focus of this video is more around just how to use that gallery so what I'm doing is essentially I'm going to click save actually just to show that and if we go back to our formula, what's happening is I've actually put all the values into this temporary collection first, which is essentially um, each row in that gallery and the forecast prediction and the commentary. And then I'm going to patch this SharePoint list and I'm essentially going to send all the data. But the key thing here is I'm doing a for all function. Now, the for all means that I'm basically doing a separate patch for each line, therefore turning a gallery. Um, into multiple multiple forms that's a way of thinking about it hope you enjoyed that um, it's you know it's it's a highly highly efficient way of sending lots of data rather than um, someone having to go through and actually submit you know how many lines there are here 
um, different forms because essentially if you were doing it in the conventional way you would basically have a form and then another form and then another form etc hope you enjoyed that don't forget to hit subscribe if you like that and thank you for coming to my channel and listening to me talk i hope you learned something from this video thank you